This is the underside of my Magnavox Embassy, the television from the Embassy console. It's a CT224. Thanks to uh, Bob Anderson, uh, B. Anderson TV, who uh, sent me a, a PDF of the writer's manual. I could not find a schematic. I did get a schematic from the SAMS uh, site. And so I have both a, a decent schematic plus decent information uh, via Bob Anderson. Uh, and uh, so I've made a start on recapping the uh, CT224 from my Magnavox Embassy. I've replaced eight wax capacitors. Here they, here's the old ones. The new ones are all in place here. You know, I looked at this thing and I thought it would be an easy job. <laughs> no, wrong. This thing is really crowded in, but the hardest part is going to be these electrolytics up here. These four cans plus the two up here. But these four cans, I have uh, electrolytics for those. But I'm going to have to put them in strategic places. For example, there's a 72 mic electrolytic, which I don't know where they come up, why they come up with 72. But I'm going to put a 40 and a 33 in parallel to... Uh, 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 come up with close to that value, but I'm going to mount it down here uh, because this lead right here, which is a 72 uh, mic electrolytic, it makes a few stops, but it ends up right there. This is the choke, filter choke, and uh, it ends up right here. So I'm going to mount a terminal strip somewhere in there and mount two parallel capacitors for that. But the trick is, is those capacitors don't go to chassis. They go to, uh, they go to the, these capacitors are isolated from the chassis. And only one of these capacitors actually is grounded to the chassis, this one right here. But all of the rest of these go to this common, which is minus 100 volts. So I'm going to have to run a lead from here through here somehow down to that terminal strip to accommodate uh, the, the 72 mic uh, capacitors, which of course is two 33s, and a, or one 33 and a 40 mic, which comes of 73, 72. As been mentioned by other re rebuilders, I think there's a lot of leeway in these old chassis, but that capacitor will end up mounted there. Where the, all the other ones are gonna go, I don't know. Anyhow, I made a start. I have the coronavirus blues, so it's very hard for me to make an effort to work on this, but I made a start, and that's the main thing. So what I've done so far, <clears throat> I've replaced all of the paper wax capacitors, um, it, <clears throat> and just two electrolytics, this one up here, and this one right here. I, I curled the wire around the old wire from the other electrolytic because getting in there to solder it uh, on the tuner would be very, very difficult. So this is what I did with this one. But uh, all of the uh, paper wax capacitors have been replaced with uh, modern Mylar film capacitors. These uh, two that are right here those are Y2 safety caps <clears throat> these are the ones that were there these mica mold and uh, so when that silicone I stuck those on with silicone I scratched the chassis to make sure that they stick <clears throat> but when that silicone sets up I'll wire those in uh, they're Y2 safety caps. They go from either side of the line uh, into to chassis connection. So the, the next thing I have to do is I have to replace all the electrolytics in these four electrolytic cans and that's going to take a little bit of uh, thought and engineering because um, I really don't have a lot of room to put all of them in there. I think a couple of them are going to end up down here um, I have to put in some terminal strips, but uh, that'll be the last phase. Once I got all those capacitors in and done, then I can probably uh, power this thing up and see what I've got to work with. And so here's where I'm at with this so far. 
these four electrolytic capacitors on either side of the choke here represent three sections of the canned electrolytics up here. Uh, the 33 and the 40 in parallel makes 70, 72, 73 uh, microfarads. That represents this section up here. And this wire, I just clipped it, curled it over and heat shrink uh, a, a piece of heat shrink over it because I didn't want to cut, cut it out of the loom. Now this other, uh, these are 240s in parallel, which of course is 80 mics. Uh, this represents this section here and this section right here, up here, 240s in parallel. Now this was jumpered over to here, which I cut that jumper out, and then this was jumpered up right up to here. And then from there, this is the input from the power supply. From there it goes down and it ends up here. So I cut the wire between here and here out. Now these two are Y2 class safety caps to the chassis either side of the line in. I cut out the two mica mold which went to ground up here. I don't know if you can call these safety caps. I don't know if these are designed to go open on fail or not. But when you got both sides of the line going to chassis for line filtration, you want the safety caps to fail open and not short. So uh, that's what these are. These are Y2 safety caps here. So that's where I'm at so far. So now I got the rest of the sections of these electrolytics to find places for. Uh, it's quite a job, but I'm uh, moving along with it so far. One thing I didn't mention is this white wire with the red stripe right here. That's the common of the four electrolytics, which are the cans are isolated from the chassis. That's something that's important to always remember when rebuilding something like this. The, uh, the negative part of the capacitors do not go to chassis. Uh, at all. They go to, uh, the, there, there is a, a minus 100 volts common and that's what this red and white wire comes from here and goes down to all four of these lugs which are isolated from the chassis and that's what the, the negative part of these electrolytics go to. And that's why I put this uh, white wire with the red stripe in. So this is just a, a progress pause clip. Um, I've got two sections left in this can to to replace. Uh, all of these except for this one here. This, this, this was not part of the four electrolytic uh, cans. But this one, this one, this one, this one, this was part of it. And then we go down. This one was from a can part of a section of a can and these uh, four. So I've got two left and uh, it's really a challenge. I installed, uh, these are one terminal standoff terminal strips, one right there. And there, you can't see it, but it's under here. There's one there. And uh, the, this terminal strip here uh, was was in in the uh, TV unused and, and it's the same with this one nothing going to them so they they, they became uh, conveniently handy to have um, I drilled out one rivet on this uh, can here and <clears throat> didn't realize it was uh, it was broken uh, so it it basically fell off when I got the one rivet out so this this won't go along for the ride anymore but uh, um, so you got one left I like to kind of leave the top of it looking original uh, no one's going to take the chassis out to see what was done underneath they, they're only going to care if they can turn the set on uh, and it doesn't blow up so anyways I'm almost done I've got these two sections and then there's one little detail I have to take care of and well let me see if I get my flashlight on it and shine a light on it. 
but uh, in the corner there is a switch that's the interlock when that switch is up there's no power to the at all to the power transformer so it's the thing is dead how does that switch get turned on well <laughs> back here if you look at the back of the chassis the interlock plate was there except I didn't get it or wait a minute no I know what 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 the deal is that might be part of the cover sure that's part of the cover that I took off for the uh, high voltage cage so when you take the, the cover off that I didn't even realize that until now but when you take the cover off the high voltage cage that those are the screws for it um, it it lets that switch go up so yeah I thought there was something missing but no boy I'm <laughs> I'm kind of mixed up I guess so that's how it works you take the high voltage uh, cage cover off that switch goes up and there's no power so once I put the high voltage cage back I have to remember that because I won't be able to test it uh, let's see I'll have to figure out if I could test it leave that cover off so I could look inside and see if there's anything nasty going on inside that high voltage cage when I first power it up so anyways a uh, couple more capacitors to do I'll double check my work and pretty I'm getting pretty close to a first power up okay I, I've got it all rebuilt as, as far as I've got all the electrolytic caps and and boy there were a lot of them really there were a lot but uh, uh, there's a discrepancy between the schematic that I have and what was in this chassis just one small one and it's this capacitor right here which goes to chassis ground it, it, it was attached into the tuner assembly it was a 10 mic at 350 volts here it is I took it out 10 mics at 350 volts I made a mistake I knew I counted on on the four cans I counted that there should be five 10 mic at 475 volts so I bought five 10 mic at 500 volts uh, uh, five and I, I recounted I, I knew that I counted five segments of these four capacitors were 10 at 475 now when I replace these two capacitors the one up here and this one I saw this was a 10 mic at 350 and I thought well that's one of my 500 volts so I put one in there and of course when I got to this one here I was short one capacitor and I thought well, what did I do wrong so I double checked and this capacitor here is a 10 at 350 volts I put a 22 at 350 because that's all I had in in a in my part stash was a 22 I hope it works right so but that capacitor this capacitor here is not in the schematic nor is it in the parts listing and yet it was a factory capacitor I know when I took it out it was factory installed it went from the tuner that connection into the tuner to the ground over here I snipped it out um, so I don't know um, the, it was hard for me to find information on this chassis uh, Bob Anderson was very kind sent me the writers uh, PDF and then I got a schematic from the Sam's website but there's a, a slight discrepancy so I'm thinking that maybe that was just a, a factory modification maybe there was a service note that came with it but anyways at this point I'm close to uh, powering it up for the first time to see what I got that's always a scary thought <laughs> I'm going to double check my uh, work just to make sure I didn't make a, a, an obvious mistake so I'm going to do a first power up 
see what we get. I'm all set. I had not never powered this up. The old uh, electrolytics were shot. So here we go. And amps are dropping, but they should go up once the horizontal kicks in. And there it goes. Horizontal is going up. Current draw is going up. And I see some imaging here. I'm not getting much through on this thing. Hmm. The sound turned off. Gotta be the the vertical. No horizontal hold on it. Like nothing's getting through the the tuner. Turn the sound on once. Kinda. Yeah, like I say, nothing seems to be getting through the tuner at all. Oh, this fine-tuning control is working or not. Well, I'm hearing some sound. Well, at least I got a raster. <laughs> But uh, no video is getting through, or so it appears. Well, anyways, I've got a raster on the screen, and I do get audio out of it, but no video. Uh, and the, the looks like the horizontals went way out of whack, so I'll have to do some troubleshooting on it.